Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Power of Storytelling. Today we have Brandon Garcia. He went to Arizona State University, was in journalism school. He's been with a whole bunch of production, directing, things like that. And he's currently a production manager within the UFC. It's a really special one here today, guys. Don't forget to hit subscribe below and let's get right into it. Here we are with Brandon. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and get it going today? Hey, Logan. Yeah, great to be here. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from Arizona State. Um, I got my degree in broadcast journalism and currently am a production manager with the UFC here in Las Vegas. So was there anything specifically about broadcast journalism that made you pick that over everything else? Yeah, so um, I was pretty fortunate. I got um, I went to a private school in Los Angeles where I grew up, and one of the courses I took over there in high school was um, like some filming and um, some. We had a uh, like a news station at our high school, and we did the news. Um, so I learned all the different techniques and things like that um, that go along with filming and production and all that good stuff so I knew pretty early on that I wanted to pursue a career in this industry <clears throat> so I um, went on to uh, the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism over at Arizona State which is a really great school um, if anybody's interested in broadcast journalism and uh, yeah I got some really great experience while I was attending college there so, uh, what, like, what's your, what's your favorite thing about it? Um, I mean, it's such a like vast industry. If you really think about it, I mean, you have like the film side, you have the, the news side, the media, um, sports, there's so much that goes into it. Um, and I've been fortunate to do kind of a little bit of everything over the course of my career, I've had the chance to, I started in broadcast news. I worked for the Fox station in Phoenix. Um, I was directing news there my first three years um, while I was still in college. Um, and so I've worked at a couple different um, news stations around the country. And I've also worked in sports as well. I've worked for Fox sports. I've worked for ESPN. And like I said, now the UFC. So um, to me, what's what's really cool is it's whatever you want it to be in, in not just my career, but, um, you know, there's so much aside from production, there's sales, there's marketing, there's producing, um, there's so many different ways to get involved in this industry. Um, but my favorite part is just like, you know, seeing everything come together firsthand from, you know, start to finish. And just kind of being able to sit back and see the final products when it all comes together is, is my favorite part. Yeah. So that, that was a little interesting. So you touched on it a little bit. You were talking about how while you were in college, you were actually helping out with Fox as well? Yeah. So um, at, by the end of my freshman year, I had started with an, um, a program called the Emma Bowen Foundation, which is a foundation that... Um, is it's a national foundation that chooses um, minority students to pursue um, careers in media. So they were able to match me with the Fox station KSAZ in Phoenix. Um, so I started in production there um, and I started off just like floor directing in the studio during the shows. And then eventually I was directing after like my first year there. Um, so yeah, I spent, basically the last three years of college um, interning slash working there um, and got some really good experience while I was there. Do you have any like favorite moments from working there or any like memorable things that like, you learned from there? Yeah. I mean, it was pretty interesting. Like I spent like probably half my time working on the evening shows and the other half of my time working on the morning shows <laughs> and I mean, they're like totally different, like totally different shows, to be honest. Uh, the morning show is very fun. It's a long morning show. I think it was like five or six hours. Um, and so, you know, you have a lot of like cooking segments, fun segments, celebrity appearances, um, which were always fun. 
Um, I remember like the Wayans brothers uh, came on the morning show a couple times and I always like loved watching their movies. So that was kind of like fun to see them. Um, but then on the flip side, on the night side, it's very more like serious. That's when like breaking news usually happens and it's very fast paced and things are always changing. So um, it was good to see kind of like the grind of the evening shows and like all the hard work and, you know, things that go into um, the real news business, um, you know, finding stories, stories that are breaking um, sending reporters out in the field to go cover these stories and just seeing how quickly things can change. And in Arizona at that time, um, there was just a lot of like big national breaking stories that were getting a lot of attention that um, it was cool, very cool to be a part of like covering some of those stories. Yeah, that's, that sounds all pretty awesome. Uh, so another question, uh, would you have any advice for someone that's kind of looking to go to school for that? like beforehand yeah i would say um for anybody that's interested in like pursuing this field um it's it's a very fun but also very competitive field to be in um when you think about it you know as far as like if you wanted to work in news there's only a handful of news stations in every city right if you're i'm in vegas right there's only a handful of like Fox, CBS uh, affiliates out here. Um, So it's a very, you know, just super competitive field to be in, but um, there's ways for you, you know, at a young age to really get um, some good experience. I mean, it's so easy now, like with YouTube and, you know, Instagram and all these other platforms now, like anybody can create content from anywhere. And, you know, you, it's never too early to start, you know, watching videos to learn how to like maybe video edit, for example, or use your iPhone to like film some stuff. Or um, if you want to be like on camera, you know, put yourself in front of your phone or your laptop and record some videos and things like that. Um, So just any way you can in any shape, shape or form, um, just start getting some real, real experience um, learn as much as you can and like find a mentor in the industry that can kind of show you the ropes a little bit um, and then kind of you know evaluate and go from there and find a good school and all that good stuff. So you, you touched on it a little bit there. Did you have any mentors yourself growing up? Yeah, so um, oddly enough, the uh, guy, this guy, Paul Austell, Um, He was actually my boss over at KSAZ. He was assigned to be my mentor my freshman year at Arizona State. Um, And then he ended up, um, you know, I ended up working under him while I was at the Fox station there. And he was just very, um, like, just a very good guy. Um, He showed me the ropes and he showed me, you know, there were times where I had mistakes and things like that. He was very patient with me. Which was great because, you know, I was just a college freshman. So, you know, I didn't know. I knew some things, but I obviously didn't know everything. Um, So it was great to have him to kind of bounce ideas off of and show me how the industry actually works. And, um, you know, I I had a very solid three years there while I was there, which was great because I learned a lot. It's always helpful to have someone that's kind of like been there, done that, kind of help guide you in the right direction. Um, exactly but you touched on it like before that but you were talking about how the industry itself was pretty competitive right yeah so would you have any tips for like someone like like how to operate in a competitive environment yeah i mean i would i would say just build your resume focus on your resume don't focus so much on what other people around you are doing um i know like when i was at arizona state Um, you know, there was always other people who were getting involved in like the student run newspaper or, um, other internships with sports teams, the Diamondbacks or whoever. And, um, you know, which was great. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not about what you or your friends are doing. You got to focus on yourself and, um, you got to build your experience, you know, from the ground up and, um, I know a lot of people tend to 
like save internships for like, you know, your junior or senior year, things like that. But I had an internship all four years while I was in college. Um, from the day I stepped on campus, I was already applying for internships. Um, and that was luckily due in part because I had experience with video editing and I had a couple skills already developed um, by the time I got to college. So like I, like I was saying earlier, like if you can, you know, find ways from home to, you know, learn how to video edit or, um, you know, learn how to write scripts and things like that, um, those things will go a long way in helping you get some experience to be able to get your first internship and then your second and third and, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, I think that's super important. There's nothing, you know, it, it doesn't matter what school you went to or whatnot. Your experience at the end of the day is and your resume is what employers are going to be looking for. Would you, would you say uh, networking plays like a big role within this industry? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think this as even though this is like a big industry, it's kind of a small industry in some ways because it feels like someone knows someone, you know, it's like everyone kind of knows each other in some way or form. Um, so yeah, there's definitely um, networking that, you know, is always beneficial. It doesn't hurt to reach out to people on LinkedIn or, you know, whether it's coworkers, friends of coworkers. Um, it's always good to network with other people because you never know, um, how you can lean on those people in the future or, you know, use them as references or, you know, maybe you can help someone else too. It, it goes both ways. It's not always just you taking from somebody else. Um, there's times where I've like helped or referred other people as well to other jobs. Um, so yeah, it's always good to network for sure and have people that you can count on people that you can use as a reference, things like that. Yeah, I like how you said that, how networking, it's more mutual than just kind of like one-sided. I kind of like, you guys can both help each other in a lot of ways. Exactly. But then next, so I'm, I'm going to go over go over some of the roles that you had listed within your LinkedIn. The one that I just wanted to, kind of, wanted to ask some questions about was being a camera operator at within Pac-12 Networks. So I was just kind of curious, like, how was that for you? Anything you liked, didn't like? Yeah, so that that goes back to like when I was in college, um, I was applying for like various internships. Um, I believe that started actually when I um, there was a an email that came through from our um, like one of our college counselors um, sent to all of ASU students saying that the Pac-12 was in town for a golf tournament um, for the Pac-12. Uh, I believe it was the women's golf tournament and they were looking for a videographer to film some of that um, for the PAC 12. And they were going to send it out to a lot of their affiliates and like news networks and things like that. Um, in case anybody wanted to run highlights of the PAC 12 golf tournament. Um, so I filmed that and I thought it went well. And I think some of that footage aired in like different news markets across the country, I believe. Um, and then, um, later on down the line, the contact that I had with the, the guy from the PAC 12, um, he reached out again because the PAC 12 was looking for camera operators for the broadcast of some of their basketball games, PAC 12 basketball games. So, um, it was pretty cool. I got to, uh, I was on the court, um, for the broadcast, uh, as a camera operator, um, for some of the PAC 12 games, ASU. And then I actually went down to LA as well for a USC college basketball game. Um, so, I mean, that was like, you know, it was really cool being side to side, side by side with guys that were years and years beyond my age with experience. And to know that, you know, I was on the same, you know, playing field as them to, you know, be able to hold my own as a camera operator, even though I was very like inexperienced and, I was only in college at the time, but I, I still knew enough and I, you know, was able to, you know, just hold it down on the court as a camera operator, which was really cool. So I only did a few games with them um, just because I was still doing other stuff with Fox at the time. But um, yeah, it was definitely a very cool experience. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. Uh, would you, would you say you learned a lot from that experience as well? Yeah, I did. Um, 
for anybody that's like never done um, like shot a, a college sporting event before um, each camera position is like very much different from the other. So for example, like on one of the games I was under the basket as a camera operator. And so, you know, you are the closest to the court, obviously being on the court. So, you know, during free throws and things like that, you're heavily relied on to shoot that content. Um, so that's, that's one side of it. And then on another side, you have like the, the main game camera, which is like higher up in the stands and you're the main camera that everyone sees going back and forth, following the action as the wide, the main wide shot, um, that most people see at home for most of the game. Um, so I did that camera as well, uh, for one of the other games that I did with them. Um, and that's obviously a lot of pressure too, because you're, camera is being used throughout the broadcast for most of the broadcast. So um, it was very cool to see, you know, work a couple different cameras, different angles, things like that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's all learning experience. And I mean, I was getting paid for it, but for me, it was invaluable. Um, just the learning experience that I got from that for sure. So, uh so it sounds like you've done the news and sports. Uh, like, is there a big difference between like operating in both fields? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is like in news, um, you're sitting in a control room, right. And you're, you know, the, the news is live and you're, um, working in a studio environment, um, with, you know, you have your main anchors, your weatherman, your sports guy, um, and, you know, you're working with a team of producers and as the director, um, you are sort of guiding the ship and guiding the broadcast amongst everyone that I just named. Um, so it, it is kind of a lot of pressure and it's very fast paced. You're going from story to story, camera to camera, maybe out to the field for a live shot with a reporter and then back in the studio and to weather, to sports and back and forth. Um, so it is kind of a lot. Um, whereas in sports, you know, everything is unscripted and it's all kind of unfolding and you're kind of there to react and to bring the viewer, the sports fan, the best possible content to whatever's happening in that moment. If somebody hits a home run, you know, it's your responsibility as, as part of the broadcast team to show what the atmosphere, what the fans in the stadium are, are how they're reacting when somebody hits a home run and how, you know, the athlete themselves, how the team is celebrating when they hit a home run. Um, so it's, you know, it's a different atmosphere for sure. Um, but um, nonetheless, it's, it's still very, it can be very stressful, but also very fun in real time when you, when you're there in the arena and kind of soaking everything up um, as a sports fan, but also as a working broadcast member um, to, you know, bring the viewers at home um, in there, in the arena with you, um, even though they're watching through their TV or maybe through their phone. Um, but the idea is to get as close to the action as to, as possible. So kind of leading into our next point, will be just talking about your current position within the UFC being a production manager. Uh, just what are some of your favorite things about it? Um, so honestly, I've been a big fan of the UFC for several years now. Um, back when I was with Fox Sports, Spot, Fox Sports had the rights to the UFC. So that's kind of how I got into it. And then when I moved over to ESPN, ESPN at that time had the rights to the UFC. So um, I've been following the UFC for several years now, and um, it's kind of surreal to be working for them, honestly. Um, but now that I've been with the UFC for about a year now, um, it's very cool to see how the UFC operates. Um, the UFC, for those that don't know or maybe aren't um, huge fans of the UFC, the UFC produces a lot of content. Um, we have the UFC Fight Pass app where we stream a lot of our original content. And then there's other content out there that you'd see like on ESPN Plus or on YouTube as well. Um, and so, you know, just the I 
going back to your question, my favorite part would be um, as a production manager, we put so much um, effort into planning and pre-producing and producing our shows. Um, so seeing our shows go from, you know, just an idea or the planning process and seeing how they play out and seeing the final product, um, that would be my favorite part because we put a lot of, you know, we have UFC athletes all around the world. Um, so, you know, whether it's a, um, an athlete over in Russia or, um, you know, Paris or another part of the world, like we have crews everywhere. We can plan logistically wherever we need to get to, to make a shoot happen, make an interview happen, follow an athlete for a day or two. Um, and so it's very cool to see how all of our content comes together. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I feel like just seeing it out in play and just seeing like kind of like the masterpiece that you guys put together has got to feel pretty good. Um, yeah. So then I guess last thing about your work experience, I was going to ask like, what are, what's the biggest thing you've learned from the UFC so far, like working with the UFC? So the UFC is um, in this position, this would be something that is totally outside of the box um, compared to anything else I've done. Because in the past, I've worked predominantly for like major news or media outlets. Um, so this is like my first time working for a sports organization. Um, um, it's very different from any of the broadcasts I've done in the past. But um, yeah, I would say what. I do make it more um, you know, when you have a production that um, that covers a lot of ground in terms of um, all the different aspects of filming, whether that's um, like I said, you know, tracking someone down in Dagestan, Russia, for example, and the logistics, you know, do we need a translator um, when we get the footage back? We need to get that footage translated if it's in Russian um, and just being able to, you know, spend time with athletes. And for me, my favorite part is the, all the athletes that we have, they all come from all different parts of the world, which means they all have a bunch of different compelling stories to tell as well, especially from, you know, you're talking about world class athletes and MMA guys. Um, so they all have very compelling stories. And I think it's super interesting when we get to finally share someone's story that hasn't been told before. Um, I think that's, you know, definitely something that we love doing at the UFC and we do it very well. I'm just curious, uh, do you have any memorable ones or any ones that you've done that stick out when you're like telling people's stories, fire stories? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a few like off the top of my head. Um, I we have so one of the shows that I work with uh, that I work on is UFC Countdown, um, where we feature you know a handful of fighters that are going to be fighting on one of our pay per view events, um, and we do like almost like an hour long uh, documentary series of them, uh, which includes like their training, any kind of lifestyle interviews with them and just kind of get to know them a little bit as they get ready to fight um, for their next fight. Um, so one of the guys that we covered um, several months ago was Jared Gordon. Um, and so he is someone who has dealt with addiction in the past and drug abuse. And um, he's overdosed a handful of times. Um, and I honestly didn't know that much about his story. Uh, until he started telling me his story. Um, and so just to hear some of the things that he's overcome um, for him to be where he's at now, fighting in the UFC clean and sober and um, all the, you know, history that he's dealt with in the past. Um, to me, that's like super inspiring. And, um, you know, that's just like one example, but I'm sure I could give you others as well of other fighters who have, you know, just as compelling stories to tell as well. I, that does. That sounds awesome. Sounds like an amazing story. So now we're going to wrap it into our last two questions. 
what one is what does success look to you look like to you um success is you know it's it's different to everyone right so i'm glad you asked like what it means to me but um to me the way i like to look at it is you know i'm proud of the different things that i've been able to accomplish in my career um but at the same time like i'm always hungry right i'm, I'm never quite content with where I'm at now. I'm always looking for, you know, what's the next five years going to look like for me. You know, I can sit here and we can talk all day about, you know, different places that I've worked in the past or things like that. Um, but to me, um, you know, I'm always looking forward to the future and I'm always looking at what I'm doing now, um, with the UFC. Um, so for me, success is, um, being able to be proud of what I'm working on and also putting my best foot forward as well. Um, so, you know, and I'm always learning, you know, I, I have over 10 years experience in this field now, but even to this day, like I still haven't learned everything. I'm, I'm always learning every day. Um, I'm learning from my coworkers. I'm learning just, you know, being in the moment with athletes and managers and, producers and different folks that I haven't necessarily worked with in the past. Um, so it's, it's, you know, something that you have to keep working at success. It's not just something that, Oh, because you're, you know, five, 10 years into your career that you can call yourself successful, something that you have to keep practicing, to be honest. The nonstop journey, just nonstop chasing it. Like you said, you, Pretty much always got to stay pretty hungry. I like how you exactly. said that. Uh, so last question we'd have is any last advice, anything you like to promote, anything like that? I would say, um, you know, some advice I would give is, um, you know, people, especially, you know, people that I went to school with and things like that. I know people in college who struggle with um, the idea of like, oh, what do I want to do? Or what do I want to do for a career? what do I want to do in this field? Things like that. They always ask, seem to ask themselves that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, cause I was fortunate. I knew right away what I wanted to do. I wanted to work in production. Um, and that was like an easy, like no brainer decision for me. But I remember thinking like, how, how do people not know like what they want to do or what they want to get into? Um, and so my answer to that would be, and I've learned this over the course of my career is sometimes you have to learn what you don't want to do in order to kind of eliminate the things that you do want to, you know, get into the things that you do want to do. So over the course of my career, um, especially like earlier on in my career, um, there were things in the positions that I took where, you know, I realized, okay, like, I, I don't want to have to do certain things here. Um, I don't love this part of the industry, things like that. Um, I remember when I was in college, National Geographic came into town, and they were filming a movie called American Blackout, I believe it was. And uh, um, I was able to just kind of be on the set with them for a day and um, do some like artwork for them, uh, being part of the art department, which by the way, is like putting like all the props on the set and things like that. Um, and I just kind of wanted to see what, you know, I had never worked on like a film set before, but I was curious about it. And I realized like, wow, we were here for like 18 hours, like 15 hours or something like that. And we filmed maybe, you know, five minutes of the actual movie or something um, just in like this 15 hour day. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, like, this was really cool, but at the same time, like, I don't ever see myself working in film like this just cause it's so grinding and it's very, un there, it's very scripted versus like me and news at the time was very scripted, uh, you know? So, um, yeah. So sometimes you have to learn what you don't want to do in order to figure out what you do want to do, if that makes any sense. 
Oh yeah, I, I 100 percent agree. Sometimes you just you think you'll like it, then you'll try it out, and it turns out like you kind of hate it a little bit, you know. Right, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing either. I mean, in some of the things that I did. Um, it was definitely some valuable experience, things that I picked up that definitely helped me um, get to other positions that I ended up taking later on, um, just because I had that experience on my resume and people respected that. Um, and, you know, they didn't necessarily know that I didn't, you know, ultimately want to do certain things. But um, at the end of the day, it's valuable experience, whether you really liked it or maybe disliked it. Um, so, you know, don't eliminate, I, I always tried to say yes to everything, every opportunity that came my way. There are very few things where I turned it down. Um, just because even if it didn't sound super interesting to me, I, I always wanted to see what it was all about. Maybe I'd learn something, maybe I'd learn, I didn't like it. Maybe, uh, you know, just for the future, just for my resume. Um, I always wanted to give everything a shot and see if I could take something out of it onto the next thing. That's a, that's a really good way of thinking. I agree a hundred percent, but so then with that being so that'll be it for this episode of our storytelling with here with Brandon Garcia. Uh, would you be okay with people contacting you if they have any questions or to reach out? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if you're able to like put my email on here, but, uh, or I'm, I'm not big on social media, but um, yeah, my, my email is brandon.garcia at ufc.com. If anybody would like to reach out, has any questions, I'm happy to, you know, help anybody that needs, needs help or has questions about the industry or my background, anything like that. Just want to say thank you for joining us today and I'll be all. Thank you. And that'll be it for this episode of The Power of Storytelling today here with Brandon Garcia. Thanks for tuning in. It was a really good one. I love seeing all the insights into the field, especially things like UFC, Fox Sports, Pac-12, all kind of things like that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. There should be a video popping up here. And until next time.